So in January, we started this project. It was, you know, we've had this COVID going on, quarantine going on. We've been, not been able, nobody's put playing anywhere. It struck me is that some of the places what we could do is maybe start going outside, fresh air, uh, socially distance, whatever you have to do. And so the idea came to like we're going to start a project, uh, a whole project is what we end up calling it. And we started in January, you and I, Blind Drifter Luke, mm -hmm. uh, and we started it uh, in my hometown, Old Hickory. And then we did the second one, was so, so it was Old Hickory, it was, it was episode number one. We went to uh, East Nashville second. Yeah. We went to Dixon third, went to uh, Clarksville, Tennessee, fourth, which I did that one by myself. Yeah. It was just Harry doing all of the sound. camera work, sound work, out alone, and then I'm in the parts of town and I'm going, I don't know how safe it is around. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the it, mural was cool. <laughs> but the mural was awesome. The background's too good. <laughs> but then, so then what happened from there is we, uh, one of the places I've been wanting to go to is, is to Muscle Shoals. And so we made a preparation, and at that point, Jason joined us, uh, and we went to Muscle Shoals and we shot two episodes. That would be five and six of the whole project. They turned out really better than expected, I think. Yeah. I, these things have been really cool. Sure. So it started out, so we are the crew of these whole project. We all have, we all do everything, we all carry everything, all work everything. You and I do music parts of it mostly. Jason's probably gonna join us in some stuff later. And then Jason joined us though, and, and Jason is is our on-set photographer. He is amazing. And it was like it was like a I knew he was good, but he began he began doing that and stuff. And Captured a lot of the moments that we got to and, and Jason's a really good uh, researcher. Yeah. Which we're looking he, he's really good at Finding good restaurants. And stuff. <laughs> hey, that's all part of it. But it's also part of <laughs> scoping out the towns we're going to do. We got plans to do so. The whole project is a 25 city busking tour <laughs> outside against the backdrops of these cities and pointing to the cool uniqueness of these small towns and also allowing us to share that in ways people can support these communities. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's so just, it's just been cool to also dive into the history of each place we go. And you you know you target one thing and then you end up yep. discovering all these other people or things that happen in this place. It's, like, yeah. it's a lot of the side you know. It's amazing. It's stuff that what do you think? Yeah, no, awesome. I was gonna say yeah, that's it's funny because like the last one, you know, we we know we're going for one thing and it's like oh this happened here and oh that happened there. And, yeah. Well, I, Muscle Shoals. For Muscle sure. Shoals. Muscle Shoals was big with that. Like we didn't know. The extent, all of the other stuff that was, you know, the history yeah. of that area. We and just the, knew we wanted. And, and to the, the two music studios, studio. the right. Fame Studio yeah. and the Muscle Shoals Sound Studio, and then we did all that, and it was just so much. And actually, those we broke it into two episodes. Mm -hmm. It was just too much. There was a lot of stuff. Yeah. And even those episodes are longer than the normal ones. Yeah. And we still didn't get to everything in the area. No, you know, there's there was more stuff we just didn't have time for. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like what this is all about, you know. So we, we've been doing Meeting Underground for years now. We're in, we've had three seasons, so it's like three, four years of, of doing it. Yeah. And we haven't done one in a while, but we're gonna start season four of somewhat loosely connecting to some of these towns we're going to and talking about subjects that, like for instance, in Muscle Shoals, we went down to the dam and we saw mm -hmm. some of the nature stuff and all that. It would have been great to talk about that, but it didn't fit, it didn't go into yeah. 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 So the idea of doing this is bringing us, uh, connecting loosely or kind of connecting these episodes of the, Me of the Meeting Underground this season yeah. with whole project cities that we're connecting. So every month we're going to be, it's going to take us about two years to do 25 cities, by the way, <laughs> because we're doing about once hey, a month. It's a goal. I mean, but it's something to do. And, uh, and they're unique. Yeah. But uh, now we've uh, got side issues, side projects in these, and we're going to talk about them. Therefore, this episode. You want to talk, say a little bit about yes. what this place is? Uh, it, it's about Johnny Cash. The name of this, this, this episode is The Center of My Universe, quote, uh, John, Johnny Cash. All right, that's good. Uh, all right. And it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Any right. first thoughts about the whole thing? Just 
the whole experience of it? I, yeah, I think it was personally bizarre because of we're, we're, where we're speaking about is Centerville, Tennessee. Yeah. And we yeah. grew up so close to it. I have friends that live there. Never knew anything about it. Yeah. No, and then I think that's what was even more bizarre for me is realizing how much history was in this little right. town right. away from even, you know, smaller than Dixon. And it's like, yeah. you go there and to see all that history. It's pretty cool. Pretty what, when, when you live in this area, which we have for, what, 20-something years? Yeah. yeah. The Nashville area. You always assume any, like, country musician or whatever, it's you think Nashville. Mm -hmm. And you forget, you know, where they lived and things like that wasn't necessarily in the you know, usually downtown. Away from yeah. People. So to find out that you know that, that Johnny Cash's farm that he had for what was it thirty years ago, yeah, or whatever, so it was like, out in like Bon Aqua, Tennessee, yeah. like down the road. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. You know, a little bit down the road. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was really cool, and uh, yeah. and reason why we did it was Centerville was the uh, episode. Episode seven is about Centerville, which is also the hometown of Minnie Pearl. We did all this. Mm -hmm. We did our whole project about kind of centered around Minnie Pearl yeah. and sang a song to her in the park. <laughs> well, besides that, Centerville is the county seat of of Hickman County, oh, yeah. and Bon Aqua is in Hickman County. Yeah. So we knew that it was not that far, and we wanted to go check it out. Yeah. And that's kind of like about all it was. Giant. We love Johnny Cash. Yeah. Uh, but it was cool. Yeah. And then, cool. and then we got there, and uh, starting out there was, so it's, you want to describe it a little bit like there's the farm and then there's the, the museum, they're right. all. In, you want to say anything so about it's, it's what the property? It's a hundred and what is it? 100 seven. And f I'm sorry. Hundred and seven. Hundred and seven acres. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, yeah. So both locations are just on that same plot of land, and they're about um, the same thing. Well, sure. Right. Right. So they're what. Not even a mile apart, I think. No, I don't right? think it was. No. Yeah. It's just so down the road. The museum and, yeah. the, and the farm. And then we went to, well, we we, <laughs> we landed at the museum first. That's where we meant to go first. We <laughs> walked in the door on, the, on a discussion. Yeah, we went to Video the show. I don't think we're on the right place. We showed up at the farm <laughs> thinking we were going to the museum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's but, down the road. Uh, yeah. And so they, yeah, so they sent us down there. And that's where, we, you know, we bought our tickets and everything. And, yeah. and because it's, it's not... All the same people, but they work together. I, we never really did establish that, but like basically, you bought the, when you bought your tickets. It was to both things. Yes. Yeah. So we once we had had tickets in hand was when we like we were at the museum. So that's where we started. I think starting out, even though, anything you want to add? No, go ahead. Starting out, it was kind of my overall impression was I, I'm a fan of Johnny Cash mostly by by the cool rock stuff and the cool urban stuff, the kind of the raw stuff that he did, the mm -hmm. Ring of Fire, I love all that stuff. And he was, the, he was just foundational. Yeah. But I didn't, know, I didn't really know a lot about him. Mm -hmm. And this was an eye opener to who he was because his personality is over all of them. Yeah. So right. this is his personal life area, you know, like the museum's yeah. one thing, but the house was like a very, the personal side of him, not like. So what did, what did, what did, what, did, what view did you, what views have you exchanged about the whole idea? Uh, uh, about him, anything. Well, I mean, I think his. Broader, I think his faith was probably the the most like eye opening thing. I did. I he has lyrics and stuff about you know about yeah his beliefs and stuff. I when you go there and you see his personal space, and he's got mm -hmm. stained glass it, everywhere and like it, it was yeah. in, it's deeply part of his life. Yeah, and you yeah. felt it and, yeah. and you could see it. And, and that was actually pointed out to us that a lot of the time that he spent out there, yes, it was to where he landed post tour, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever, but it was also where he went to write. And a lot of this, I guess, I guess the later, because yeah, he owned the place for what, 30 years or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So I guess the later part of that was yeah, it, when it came to a lot of the spiritual, like lyrics, that, that's that focus on yeah. his lyrics, right. was all stuff that he. T it was his tendency to be there to do the writing there right. with that right. stuff. It seemed like his quiet place where you could kind of right. ruminate. It was his yeah. quiet place. And, and, and that kind of goes more into, bigger into the house, which we're going to talk about a little bit. Yeah. But so the museum, we pull up to the museum. First thing I noticed was the bus. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone, you go, we were looking around and getting ready to walk in. And I look over and I'm going, I remember that bus. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an old tour bus where he and all the, all the, it's probably like, he and uh, Elvis and and uh, Jerry Lee and all them drove around on that bus and it's yeah. sitting there. So I got a little video. It's You're cool going to show bus. you a little bit of that. But uh, that was cool. And then we went into place. We 
walk in. So it's in. It's. I also come to find out it's in like this really old general store that's been there since the since eighteen hundred, yeah. which they redid the whole the, the newest owners of the museum. Yeah, redid it all, but it's cool. It's the original structure that Johnny Cash. Bought it was a in the day. grocery store train stop or something. Yeah, for people like out on you know a place yeah. to get snacks and you know yeah. simple stuff. Yeah, it's cool. Out on the pad, like out on the road. It's it's wild. And then they turned but it in. Somebody cool before Johnny Cash turned it into a recording studio. Oh yeah. And right. then it went to Johnny and Johnny. Just, there's lots of stuff videotaped in that place. Yeah. History. But so the museum itself. What was your impressions? We you know just loosely we went in. There's an open entrance way. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of shirts. Yes. Yes. Yeah, One of my favorites. I got. Oh, I'm not wearing mine. I have the same shirt. <laughs> it's really it's cool. awesome. Cool when the man, merch. when the man comes to town. Yeah. Right? When the man comes around. Yeah. Man comes around. Sorry, that's his song. Man comes around. Real gospel scorcher. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's a very cool shirt. Yeah. But uh, so that was in there, and then and then and then from there, and then let, let, go ahead. Maybe you, your impressions walking in, and then walking into the main area. So so let me let me think. We. When we walked in, yes, there's there was the shirts and the things like that for you to buy out front. But mainly, we were talking to we I, did we get her name? I she her she name. is Mark Cash's Mark's wife. Wife, yeah. So it's it's this husband I didn't and wife get her name. that run this this museum mm -hmm. together. Very nice. Yeah, she was very cool. And when um, we told her what we were shooting to do, uh, what we were there to shooting, she was really excited about. Yeah, it. yeah. Uh, and so that was cool. So I know we we kind of walked in and we were talking to her and kind of like scoping the place out, but. I recall that like the timing on it, he was about to start performing. I think. Yes. He was, yeah. yeah he's so, already with a group. So we kind of pushed through to, to so as to not miss any of that, and then yeah. you know went back out and talked to her later more. Yeah. But, before, uh, so before we get to his performance, yeah. what some of your thoughts when you went in? Uh, explain what it's like when you go into the room, uh, past the entrance, past the, the merch. Oh, past the merch room. Just explain a little bit of. What you yeah, see it was, when it was you walk going in there because I didn't had no idea what to expect. I didn't even really know what kind of museum it was. And you walk in, and it's like a gift shop, and they had surprisingly cool merch, which mm -hmm. was the kind yeah. of first thing that struck me. But then you, which is why who know Johnny Cash had so many nice yeah. shirts. And we kind of hear, <laughs> we kind of hear Mark Cash, you know, doing like on stage, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, what, oh, what's back here? And we yeah. gotta walk back there, and you walk into this. Big wide open room, in the room. And stage, and just stuff. And be even yeah. before Mark Cash, is you, you, you walk in this room, and there's just displays yeah. of tons yeah. of stuff, and stuff. you don't, you can't take it in all at once. But then you start walking around, and go, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the history in there is different. It's, it's pretty, pretty cool. Eye opening, yeah. We all caught stuff that the others didn't, and yeah. we were like, "Did you see this thing?" Like, and we were taking each other around to be like, "Look, yeah, you know, I know. which we'll get to." Yeah, we'll get to it right now. Pick one thing that stood out to you. Real one, quick. This is not. We're not talking about Johnny. Uh, about Johnny's nephew, which right. is Mark Cash. Yeah. Because yeah. we we'll, we'll mention him, but he he does a whole presentation. Yeah. Brings He's you really nice into. Guy. Yeah. But uh, but when you're in there, there's these displays. And they're not all about Johnny Cash. <laughs> no, no, they're not. So a bunch of history he's coll he collected. What what did you like? What did, what stuck to you? Just pick one of the ones that was. Cool. One of the things that jumps out to you the most, and it was hard to miss them, was that artwork by uh, it was uh, Brzezinka. Was the oh, name? the guy that does that folk art. So so you had I mean when you walk through the door, dead ahead is the one of Johnny. But then there was another one of Abraham Lincoln. There was another one of Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. There was there was there was a fourth one. I and it's this know. three dimensional yeah. uh, in a frame three dimensional folk art. It's almost found art, but it's items that have to do with the art. Maybe yeah. even items that that person owned. I'm pretty so sure. So like the Johnny yeah. Cash one, it had pieces of like forty fives of his music or guitar strings mm -hmm. or things like that that were like embedded in the art so it's very it's very yeah. textual it's, yeah. it's a three really cool comes out at you that's the i mean that was that hits you in the face as soon yeah. as you walk through that the one of johnny and he's johnny said, I think it was he straight did, across i think he did say that i don't know about the other ones but i think they did say that specifically the johnny one was entirely stuff of his of it was his, all yeah. personal i think so. yeah. And yeah tickets and yeah it's, that, it's, that was cool that, that was very cool and then there's a lot of other stuff in there one uh one of the things that that, that stood out to me. I walked over and I'm looking at this up. I'm going to do one of your thing. Yeah. Upright piano, and I'm yeah. looking at this piano. Mm -hmm. And we've had on our whole projects, we've come across some pianos. Yeah, we yeah. We've come across pianos that are just so incredibly Incredible. historic. Mm -hmm. uh, watch some whole projects, you'll see it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the 
piano, this upright beat-up piano, it says, it says that this piano was used to write the song uh, Elvira, <laughs> which the Oak Ridge Boys have been doing forever and ever and ever. Like, a classic. Yeah. On this beat-up old piano was written. It was cool. That was one thing. Yeah. What, what was something you thought? Oh, geez. There was... Well, Just any of them. Not even related to Johnny Cash, and I wasn't the first one to notice, but that horse saddle. The saddle! Yes. Jason pointed it out to me, and I'm like, oh, what was that? I said, yeah, I'm a horse saddle? That's cool. I was like, maybe it's Johnny's. And I thought <laughs> it was Johnny Cash's saddle, and I just yeah. thought, oh, he's a big like, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Then Jason pointed out, it's pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> it's a. Uh, John Wayne's saddle. Yeah, from, John Wayne's saddle. John Wayne's <laughs> saddle is just yeah. like, and obviously it makes sense. Like Johnny Cash would be a huge yeah, fan. Yeah, it was really cool. And it was cool that they had those little one sheet things. I mean, it told how they got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was really cool. And maybe something else you. I know something that you were super excited for because yeah. I saw. You, yeah. I I was there oh, yeah. when you spotted it. Yeah. There was that that guitar. That Amazing. Carl, Carl Perkins. Yeah, we were talking about stuff, and you got you were yeah. talking about something else, and I'm looking at the wall, and, see, <laughs> and I see this it's Nighthawk. Like... It's a Nighthawk Gibson, which yeah. you don't see a lot, yeah. and I never even associated with him, but yeah. it was Carl Perkins yeah. guitar, and, and awesome. they had a photograph of Carl Perkins. Per Perkins playing that song. <laughs> Blue suede shoes, by the way, yeah. is what he wrote. Yeah. Anyway, it's like, uh, so that was really cool. Yeah. And then what? Some, okay, I, we're there gonna was, move on a little bit. But yeah, there was so much stuff though. I, the, like the keys. All the keys. Yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, I've case. been every. What is it? I've been everywhere. I've been man. everywhere, man. I've been, I've been everywhere. everywhere. And then, and then Mark Mark Cash was saying. Uncle Johnny, when you sang that song, they must have had a sheet of, in front of you to yeah. list off all those cities. <laughs> he says it was a big sheet. <laughs> so yeah, there was that. There was that like suitcase full of hotel keys. Yeah, from okay. all the places. And it was, it was all over the world. Yeah, it was all over the world. It's just, it was so cool. And they had that really cool artwork that was down in front of it. That was like um, a grid of like little boxes of oh, yeah. all those. And uh, of all the different keys, yeah, different and then hanging. right in the middle was a photo of the suitcase we were looking at. Yeah. It was right behind it in the in yeah. the display case. Um, so that was really cool. Something of note to me about the overall place. Um, so I got that. Uh, there was a really cool angle. I showed Johnny. We missed it that there was yes. the, 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 when you're standing behind the saddle. One of the support beams had a cross beam on it. It was a giant. Yeah. So it's one of those things where if you're standing behind the saddle and looking straight at the stage, yeah. you had the saddle and then you had the beam yeah. and it was a wooden, it was a huge, huge, beautiful, like car, rough wood, wood, like not polished or it was like it had bark and stuff on it. And it was obviously intentional. Right. And if you think about that, plus, I mean, the seating on the floor, I feel like it was just chairs, but if you remember, all along the line, the walls like was, church it was pews. Yes, yeah. pew church. It very much church. felt like yeah. it had a church that yeah. yeah. had just been rearranged or something, yeah. you know, yeah. which was so cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to Jim Morcash. He, he was our yeah. uh, narrator, our host. You walk in there, and there was a group of people, maybe 20 people in there, doing through this particular tour. And he sang Johnny's songs. He told stories about Johnny. He was really, really cool. Did a nice pretty good guy. Johnny impersonation. Yeah. His voice is surprisingly <laughs> close. Yeah. Once I realized he was related to him. Okay. And he himself is a songwriter, and uh, he has some shirts in the, in the main of his. Real cool. All these black shirts they do, right? That's long. Yeah, they're <laughs> some really cool. But he was great. And uh, there's going to be a little video showing you a little bit about him too. So, yeah. uh, but that was cool. Mm -hmm. And then when we got done with the that, out behind the museum, is first of all he told us that Minnie Pearl's Cadillac that's, was back there. That's why we went back there. And actually, we left, and mm -hmm. we went. Well, wait a minute. We never went to the back. We yeah. came back, and he had to open the door for us yeah. so we could go back and see it. And so we saw. Her, it was a stage back there, and there was the Cadillac. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? Any yeah. thoughts? Yeah. Well, the way he told us, you know how everything Minnie had was yellow. yellow yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. of course, this the is, Cadillac was this yellow. This is like Howdy, so Howdy, Howdy on the front, right? Or did it say so. Minnie? Might have said Minnie Pro. I don't know. I can't remember. Something like that. <laughs> but it, so, what do you I'm think? I'm glad of, we went back there, because that whole back area was very cool. Yeah. They had, they had another cross with a pool, like a, a fountain going through it. What about yeah, that stage? Dumping down. Wouldn't you love to play the that? The stage, yeah. We took some pictures up on the stage because yeah. it was so cool and just like, you know. Very outdoor. Like, it was like an outdoor uh, stage or 
camping set yeah. a tree on stage, a big giant trunk, trunk of a tree going mm -hmm. on stage. Yeah. But it was all very tasteful and really good. Yeah. yeah. And then I will. I want to point. I want to. I really. It was really fascinating. We looked over to the left when we came out, and there was just a jail cell. And we were like, Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That was. Weird. And then come to find out, it's like I think it was given to him because he. And I was listening to a live concert of him playing it. He prison. played all he, the, that was like a huge thing. And prisons his, and Johnny Cash were his lyrics he really had a heart for prisoners. Yeah, right. He did a, and explains all of his dark lyrics. He's, yeah. he's talking to a lot yeah. of prisoners cool. and stuff. So, that so was, we got some got a couple pictures cool. of us in there yeah. too. Yeah, of course I'm immediately like, Oh, you guys need to get, <laughs> get, get in there. <laughs> like and we got a little bit of stuff. We gotta do this. Yeah. You know? So anyway <laughs> it was really cool. The museum was really awesome. Yeah. And uh then we moved on to the farm. The farm, mm -hmm. yes. I believe in 1979 they shot a Christmas special that everybody in the world has seen, and it was the Johnny Cash Christmas Christmas show. Mm -hmm. And he had all these people like Waylon and all these different people that were on the show, and it was a Christmas special. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. All of that was shot at the farm mm -hmm. that we we're going to talk about. It was so. If you go back and watch that, it's kind of cool. And that seventy nine. It's like I think that's the year it was. But uh, that's so it all started there. So when you go, uh, we left the museum and we went to the uh, the farm, which they call the Hideaway Farm. Yeah. Uh, and the Hideaway Farm was Johnny Cash's uh, getaway. Yeah. And uh, so we went in, and there's first of all, there's a lot of property, and we already talked about how we went in the wrong door and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. But, but the thing, there was a uh, the house. Very rustic, almost like coming out of pioneer times mm -hmm. or something. Very rustic, simple house. And Johnny Cash loved that place. Mm -hmm. He said this is where he went when everything was getting was too much to handle. He would go there. And that's why he called it the center of his universe, this property and this house. Yeah. Uh, so what was some of your thoughts as we walked up? Up to the house. And what are your first impressions of the house? And this would be after we were there. We walked around. We went to the front door. We yeah, walked we, in. we walked in the front. So, what, some of your thoughts? I didn't know what to expect. I guess again, I guess that's what I said about the museum. But the house looks so rustic. Yeah, it's <laughs> it was, primitive. And they said the front little section of the house was built like during the Civil War. Like, yeah, yeah. Eighteen hundreds. They added on or, the back, yeah, and then the rest of the property is yeah. all newer stuff. But. Yeah. So when you walk in that first thing, the floors are uneven. It's all solid wood, like yeah, wall, everything, everywhere. So and it just felt very like old. a cabin, like a pioneer yeah. cabin, yeah. like a. Yeah. But it was very cool. The rooms weren't big. wasn't lavish at all. And he just would very hang cool. out there. Yeah. Uh, the, one of my impressions was that I watched a video about this place last year, and in the video oh, yeah. there was this little old frail woman, and she was t t talking about all of the stuff and all the history and sure enough there she was and she was a, a, a treasure trove of information she knew everything about that family yeah. everything about johnny everything you could possibly yeah. want and you could ask her questions that was coming out yeah she was a great host yeah she, she and she enthusiastic about it still she kind of did her introduction to us mm -hmm. and told us you know up there is this over there is that well and then she's like so go you know go explore etc but then she'd walk around and catch up to you yeah like she'd catch up to you in that room and she'd be like isn't this cool and she'd yeah. like tell you things in that room yeah. she caught up to me in 1980 was, in 1981 yeah. that was where june said this to me yeah. <laughs> like this crazy cool she just stuff. had all that kicking it's, around in yeah. her head so what your first school so pick out something in the house that stood up to you well, where where we were standing, which was the entrance way, mm -hmm. um, and she was telling us all that, you know, all, all the information about the house. Um, you know, you're looking around right away, and right in front of us, or right to the side of me, was um, was that stairway up, and it was all wood. And it it was, was, you couldn't go up was, there. Right, we couldn't go upstairs, but it was cool. that. It wasn't just like what it was like the rough wood. It was like log, like wood. a log, yeah, yeah, like log stuff, and yeah. it, right up the stairs and all that. Um, and it was signed by a bunch of people. Yeah, a whole bunch of people. Which like looking around, we ended up oh, noticing was a lot right. of. It wasn't strictly musicians or yeah, actors, people, or whatever, yeah. but there were, we like picked up some big names. We found some big names so, on like Waylon and stuff like yeah. that. People, yeah. it was that was pretty cool. But yeah. then right after that, right past so the, so we're towards, standing yeah. and the, and everything goes in all directions yeah. from where we were standing. There was a room to the left, a room to the right, and straight through. And so I turned. 
to the left, when you said which was, I left? guess, probably the dining room. Yeah, there was a table. Of that table, Very oh my gosh, it was just this massive, gorgeous, ornate wood table. Yeah. It was, uh, what, tw <laughs> 10 it's feet huge. long, maybe? Yeah, really nice. And just ornate stuff, and there's just this massive, like, family Bible sitting on the table. That was, yeah. that Bible I mean, was open. Old, man. It was yeah, old. that was an old Bible. It was a Bible. big one. It was like even yeah. open. It was yeah. big. Yeah, it was, like, it was probably closed. It was probably <laughs> six <laughs> inches thick. Yeah. Like it was just. And that was, and that was Johnny did everything big. Yeah. And that was his pocket Bible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that cool. was like the centerpiece in that room. Yeah. yeah. But there were so many other cool things, like you know that there was yeah. that uh, the display case running alongside, which we found yeah. out. You knew something about it. I heard him it. talking about it. It was the poster for the soundtrack for the movie. What was oh, the, yeah. What was the, What were the details on that? It was. Uh, it was a. Uh, I can't remember, but it was know. biblical. Oh no! It was God. It's the Gospel Road. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the Gospel Road. It, yeah. it was like it was a Christian uh, telling of the gospel. It, it, it and it was a. It was kind of the first back then because I was around. Mm -hmm. It was kind of the first overt thing. Yeah. That that Johnny did. In yeah. the the Christian circle of things, yeah. mm -hmm. it was actually marketed in for church uses and stuff. Right. There, I remember they wow. showed that in churches. They showed it all, but uh, that was so. That was the gospel road. Was, and he did the the soundtrack for it. Yeah. I guess I pointed out yeah. to Johnny like, oh, you could like get this soundtrack and listen to it. Yeah. That'd be really cool. Which is probably all Johnny and, and I mean I don't know. I haven't looked into it, but yeah, yeah. yeah. it's pretty cool. There's a lot of cool stuff in that room. There's, yeah, I think some clothes and stuff like maybe. I yes. remember the details, but I think remember the shirts. Cool, they had cool shirts cool. hanging up. Some of them were not as cool as others, but, yeah, but, there, there was <laughs> some, but some of them were pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and uh, like, uh, and then there was a photograph there on the wall of the Christmas special. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and you saw. I think he was with. I think again, it's Waylon. I think he was think so. down there talking to him, and it's a yeah. photograph from that mm -hmm. presentation stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, so any, anything else? We can move on from that room too. You can. Just, yeah, I mean the house was incredible. We, I mean, we literally got to walk into this bedroom. Yeah. Like I said it wasn't the original bed, but like I got still, a little video of that, and I'm going to show it. The ceilings got really low. It was yeah. the house is just, yeah. you know, ramshackle, but had so much character. Yeah, it was really. In the cool. living room, the furn. I'll just mention in general the furniture in the living room area was awesome oh awesome. yeah all that beautiful that stuff. chair that one chair was oh, so yeah. cool that and you can judge chair. i did yeah you I got, got, he got pictures of us setting in different frames yeah. off a mirror from one yeah. i tell you he's good at <laughs> yeah there was she, some cool yeah he got some angles and stuff like that we'll, we'll have to put a couple of those up like dad sit out of that chair <laughs> yeah it was cool it. uh one of the what? oh sorry i was gonna go ahead that room wasn't that the room she said to check this might have more to do with the, the history of the place, but didn't she say to check the ceiling in that room? Oh, for the, bullet the bullet shot? Holes? Yeah, the bullet holes. You want to tell the story? No, 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 go ahead. No, I don't want to tell that story. I got another one to tell. <laughs> well, was that the... Was that, that was... There, I don't know how that was tied into the Civil War story. I think that's when it was. I think that's when she was saying... This house goes back to the Civil War. Yeah. Like and the original inhabitant... A general or somebody uh, in the Civil War? It was like a, I think he was a Confederate, and, the, and when the Northern guys come up, there was a little, some sort of a skirmish. Yeah. And he was... <laughs> the, the, the other soldier was, was shot and buried in the in the graveyard, which is behind the property. Oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a cemetery in the back. To say the least, there was a lot of history in that. Not that we're promoting any of all that. Yeah. But it was it happened anyway. No, so just, I think she said some of those bullet holes had something to do with that gunfight. Or from something. yeah, like so civil we war bullet holes. Yeah. Shootout. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, and then we went on. Uh, oh, one of the things that stood to me, and I've heard this story before, but there's a little plaque in the living room next to the couch. Yes. And it told the story of how Johnny Cash. This is one of the coolest stories to get at the heart of who Johnny Cash was. Yeah. This was back in the 70s, I believe. June and him were talking about their finances and all this stuff like that. And they went and they started looking into some of the stuff that was going on. They found out that he, that he had an accountant who had stole all his money and bought a bunch of property. Basically, he had been buying up a bunch of property. So Johnny Cash, uh, they got it. They took and resold. They 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 took and resold these properties that this uh, this crooked accountant did. Uh, bought and all that stuff and then when it came to this property here yeah. in this house he says he kept it he says oh, this is this is he kept it and it became his center of his universe yeah. and all that stuff the cool thing about it was this 
the cooler pen and look at it. Yeah. The the accountant he never gave the name to anybody of who the accountant was that did it. He never filed charges. Yeah. He never took him to court. He just let him go. And when people would mention something about the guy, he would say, "Oh, he was on hard times." Yeah. That's Johnny Cash. That's a big heart. Guy ripped off, <laughs> ripped him off of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, yeah. and uh, they didn't warn. Yeah. But that was kind of like what you got the impression of. Johnny Cash was a straight up guy. Yeah. Now this is after he'd been, you know, his younger days when he was an addict and all kinds of stuff that happened. Sure. Yeah. But, but but he was a really upright kind of cool guy, and yeah. you saw it in everything. Yeah. Yeah. He seemed like a genuine, kind person. So now let's go on out to the farm. So the the property, you had the main house, and then there was a little uh, place. I don't even want to go into all the details of each one of these things, but mm -hmm. there was a little place to where we originally walked in, and there was a guy, a caretaker oh, yeah. there, mm -hmm. that tells you all these stories, which we never did go sit, but go back and set through his, his, his presentation. Mm -hmm. But he had tons of stuff, and he would talk all about it. And then you went on down, you wanted to see, so the property is 107 acres. Mm -hmm. you, you look back, beautiful tree line. Yeah. Way yeah. off in there, you see this big giant white white cross that Johnny had put up. Yeah. And, and then you go off to the right as we were walking, we went up to the, uh, yeah, the first the pavilion yeah, yeah. stage. You want to say anything about that? What it was like? It was cool. I mean, they have this huge open dance floor. You can tell it's, and then they had a nice stage and a huge dance floor, and then like another covered area where they have like a bar. Yeah. Again, really cool wood furniture and stuff. They had they had some really cool. cool and there's just there's a storytellers a storytellers program that I don't know when how often it shows it, it, it airs, but it's yeah. it's aired from that stage. Yeah. Yeah. I think they do, and I think. I could be wrong, but I think that's where they did that Christmas special yeah. originally. It probably looked a little different back then. Yeah, I'm not sure. I believe they did that there. Yeah, it's been um, fixed up a bit. No. And again, there's some cool stained glass. Uh, yeah, tell, me, uh, tell was, us a little bit about that. that the whole so decor cool. of the place. Yeah. It was it's, like old rustic barns. And right. Hardly, you could tell they've been there a long time, yeah. but. Yeah. And and then we you turn around, like it was the, um, what, is that, what is that called? Like the eaves or something? Yeah, where the, yeah, where the point yeah. comes. Where the peaks of the, of the buildings were. There were, but it would be yeah, like that section, and it, we we walked under it and didn't even spot it. I don't think. And then see. you turn around with the light on the correct side of it, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're just like, it's just this so giant they, they stained They did this. Glass. In, they did this a lot of area there. Yeah, they, where they the apparently spot. got this old vintage stained glass yeah. and, and made it part of these these barns and yeah. stuff. Hanging them yeah. the yeah. overhangs. And then down on the floor, I noticed that we were there were plaques, and yeah. he was saying. Yeah, one of them was a verse. One of them was about the coal miners. Yeah. And he was saying, yeah. thanking them for the all that they went through. Talk about a different mindset yeah. than today. Yeah. All the things that he's time. thanking them for all the hardship and all the things they went through to provide the coal that that we all live on. Yeah. Live. yeah. And that was his a, a monument built into the floor, and there yeah. was other ones too. Yeah, there were other ones. There was Isaiah, was it Isaiah or something about blessed something about yeah. the feet of the mm -hmm. man that carries the. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but there was those. Like, they were like what metal yeah. placards basically nice. built in built into the floor, floor uh, embedded yeah. into the floor yeah. like marble or something. Yeah. I don't know if they're metal. Yeah. Yeah. But then uh, there cool. was that. And there was like old car carriages and stuff. Yep. Oh yeah, on the uh, bar side. It was very cool. Even the stage it was, it was a lot like the museum, smaller stage, but this yeah. was a big stage. Yeah. Where they do full production yeah, right. studio. They have. I noticed that they had some instruments there, and they had somebody's trombone laying there. So they must have been getting ready to do yeah. a show. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. think a guy would leave his trombone laying there. Right. No, they must do stuff fairly uh, regularly. Yeah, yeah so you got to figure. Cool. It's cool. Yeah. And then from there, we went to the back end, and what was that? The back building that we walked to. You Past to... the chickens. Past the chickens. <laughs> yeah. They did have a chicken coop. They yeah, did some chicken coop. Pretty cool rooster. Yeah. yeah. It was really pretty. And, and all the way in the back, we there was, and, and we're going to kind of wrap some of this up, but in the very back of the property, mm -hmm. there yes. was a a shed that had a couple cars. A couple cars. <laughs> a couple <laughs> cars. Pretty cool. One of, yeah. one of the cars was from Johnny Paycheck. It was his yeah. car. Yeah. And it was a, because we're going to talk about the second car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was his car. Was and it a Cadillac? It was a Cadillac. Yeah. It was black. Yeah. It was cool. It was, it was nice. nice. It was vintage. Nice. It was nice classic gear. Yeah. And then there was his second car. <laughs> you want to add a story to it? You want to start that? 
Well, there's uh, a song. Is a good. Tell yeah, me. no, no, yeah, the song. There's a, there's a song Johnny did. It's called One Piece at a Time. It's a funny song, yeah. and it's about how this guy built a car from a little piece here and a little piece there, and he had to be built this Cadillac and and. It's just a funny song, and I did it one piece at a time. It's like, it's really cool, it's really funny, but there's actually a car. It's actually a literal, <laughs> it's, a, it's an actual car. Explain the car. Yeah. Uh, how do you, how, okay. Yeah, it's hard to explain. Once you when you first that, walk up to it, it, I don't notice all the No, you stuff. pick, you just go, yeah, there's a car. That's and a then, weird car. And then you see the thing, which I it looked like it probably lit up. Yeah. It says one piece at a time, mm -hmm. yeah. kind of as a bar across the, the hood of the car or the, the roof of the car. Yeah. And then and then you start to notice. Start looking around. There's one headlight on this side and there's two on this side. And then you notice on the driver's side, the back seat is another driver's door because it has its it own has rear, view rear view mirror. There's two. So there's like two rear view mirrors on this side, one on the and then you just start picking it up. Like this inside fin car, is different every, than that fin. Yeah. Inside it, yeah. every seat's different. Yeah, yeah. Even the inside. What about the back of it? The funny, I think the back of it's the funniest part. The back end of the car. I, I might have missed it. Are you Giant sure? fin yeah. on one side, yeah. one of those old cat, yeah. and the other one's not. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little lower. <laughs> and when you stand in front of this car, it's like. Yeah, it's like bizarre to look at, and it didn't even process when you first looked at it. You're like, huh? And then we started like dissecting it and being like, everything is different. Every little yeah. piece, every door, we didn't, every... we didn't catch it all. Now I think it was a There's it was an more. artist mechanic guy, a friend. And we'll put his name in in the in the liner notes as we're yeah. talking. But he built that car wow. by spec, based off of off in the song, yeah. and then gave it to Johnny. And it's, it's, <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's it's, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really cool. cool. We didn't get to see under the hood. I would hope that it was just one intact <laughs> engine. And has a four piece. cylinder, half of a four cylinder, <laughs> yeah. and, a, and a twelve cylinder. It's like, yeah. Yeah. it's like anyway, it's funny. They also had a so, couple of cool uh, carriages and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, yeah. some coaches. Yeah, there was that. Were really, it was again. Cool. It's just the whole place was just Very delightful. Cool. It was really delightful. Yeah. I'm carried right back to his time. <laughs> but uh, it was really cool. Was Last impressions of everything. I, no, I started out with this. Is The person, Johnny Cash, that's what changed a lot for me. Yeah, a lot sure. more in depth. Mm -hmm. What your, some of your thoughts on that? I liked walking through a place and recognizing, because he made it clear how, how significant that place was to him. Mm -hmm. And so realizing that that's where he landed, like we said earlier, after tours and, and when he went to go right. And there was that cool story that uh, that that only his wife had the phone number to that place. No so phone. His kids right. didn't even know the number. So yeah. nobody anyone, could call. If anyone came around the house looking for Johnny and she called, if he wasn't there, that yeah. was the end of the discussion. That's like, just something about him. It's you like, couldn't get to him. He, he closed himself off. But, yeah. but walking through the place and picturing it as this place that he loved. You know, we walked past that big fire pit, yeah. Yeah. right? And you just, it's very easy to to just kind of feel exactly. that yeah. you could just stoke up a fire there and look at this huge field that's out in front of you with the tree line. That's where the cross was off there. You just, it was really cool to kind of read the place as yeah. no wonder, exactly. really no cool. wonder this place brought him so much peace. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it was a beautiful spot. Yeah. felt like a contemplative place. Yes. Yeah. It had that. Any more thoughts? On the, we, we're going to kind of wrap things. No, I I, th I think it was pretty amazing to see and unexpected. And I, and this I was really our side trip. Yeah. Yeah. This was a side trip <laughs> of the yeah. whole project. We, we want to encourage people to watch the whole project as they come out. About once yeah. a month you're going to be finding them. And they're going to be little towns, little cities. And we're not going to talk much about it up, up ahead. But we will be going there. And yeah. we're going to be doing a, a different town. Pointing out the the beauty of these towns, the coolness of these towns, ways we can support the communities yeah, in the towns. Exactly. That's what the whole idea is. And also, we're we're playing our catalog, our <laughs> music. We got you know SCR Records and Media, which is Stage Crew Records, but SCR Records and Media is what we're calling it now. We're doing a lot more media kind of things. Yeah. Well, uh, we have a big catalog of songs and music, and so we're redoing them, reintroducing them, and that brings us to the end of this show. We're, uh, we during this whole Centerville thing, we did we focused on two different songs. One was was a song that was a, like a Memorial Day song that we play that we released, and it was a, it's called uh, Our Love Is a Danger, and we sang it to Mini Pearl. <laughs> and then we and then then the other song we focused on was called High Plains Drifter, a song that you and I have played 
way back from when we first started, we've played it to audiences yeah. and places. It's been a while. It's been a while, and they kind of sat for a long, long time. Yeah. But being that, that we're in Centerville and we're in Johnny Cash, we're kind of in the country-ish thing, so we did a video of yeah. us live playing in, fitting. at the uh, Huddleston House. I want to say also, Mark Hayes oh, and the yeah. Huddleston House. They let us, they gave us a, 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 such a great uh, place to stay. The, it was amazing house, a historic house. Like we could do a whole episode on We could do a whole show. Yeah. But we, we're, we're very grateful. And so the, that so the video of High Plains Scripture that Johnny and I played, that we played there, was in that house. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but we also had recorded a new version, I, a jail song. It's a solo group song. And I recorded it for, uh, with new, new, completely new recording of a different, a different style, different measure, different, all that stuff. And... Uh, so I, I released the official audio for that when we were uh, just before all of this, yeah. Because I knew we were heading that way. Yeah. So the official audio went out and ran its cycle, and people have commented and liked it. But we never had an official video, and now we do. So we're using this episode to premiere High Plains Drifter, hmm. and hope, we hope you enjoy it. See you next time. Hi, hi, yippee, hi, 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 hi